and we are live. Welcome. And I'm trying to figure out a way to make the chat transparent. See what we got here. Trying to figure out what we're supposed to do. see if I could just make the chat transparent that would be that would be perfect just trying to do that not sure if I'm gonna be able to do it though I don't know. I think I'm just gonna start. Um, <clears throat> I think I'm just gonna start. Okay. So here we are. Eat. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Logan. All right. So I've got my chat right here, um, so I can still see you guys. Uh, I'm also gonna have to change my description. I like just started streaming. Yesterday was my first YouTube stream. Before that I streamed on Twitch, but I'm still not super familiar with YouTube streaming, so. We'll see. I'm gonna try to do some fractals with my spell breaker. Let's see. I gotta get a good uh, description going. Out here. Okay, so I've got links that I can put in the description. good there I 
Okay, can I save the settings here? Or does it just automatically save? I don't know. I'm going to try... I'm going to try restarting the stream real quick. Let's see. And start. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if that worked. We're going to see if it worked. I mean, actually, I don't really have any way to see, but... We're going to go ahead and do a few things. Oh, I really want to do the jumping puzzle right now, but I think I'm going to do some fractals first. We'll see. We'll see how this works. I think this stream is hopefully going to be better than the last one because last night I was having some issues with encoding and things like that and it was super choppy so you know we'll see okay so let's see what we got filthy casuals only sounds like my kind of place what uh I don't know what fractal we're doing. Or I don't know what the fractals fractal dailies are. Oh, apparently one Oh, apparently one of them is nightmare. Then I guess this is a good build for Oh crap, but I don't have enough agony resistance. Crap. I do not have enough agony resistance. If I, no, I just don't have enough for this one on this build. I have it on my other build. Okay, we're gonna have to do that. Let's switch builds. Because I do have enough agony resistance on the other one. On my dual axis spellbreaker, I have plenty agony resistance for days. But with this one, um, I do not. My Doliac spellbreaker, I'm still working on it. And I need to grab another bank access. Um, okay. We already in. <laughs> Alright, here's my dual axis build that I can use. And let's before I forget I'm gonna i I'm gonna grab a bank access express. And aha accessories and rings okay here we go uh, then we need dual axes and of course hammer is a good choice good secondary choice and then traits peak performance circus power yeah that's good and uh, we also need discipline and we also need pure strike here mage being tether is pretty good uh, vengeful return inspiring battle standard axe mastery of course why would you not take axe mastery when you're wielding axes all right so natural healing uh featherfoot grace bulls charge and kick and i'm going to go ahead and take an inspiring battle standard for the Insta revive, insta party revive. Oh, apparently this is happening. Once I actually come to life, I will. I want to um, use these potions here, but 
for now. I don't need to. Let me see. What is this? The that's the watchwork thing, is it not? I'm pretty sure that's the first boss. So they're not too progressed through this thing yet. I need fractal relics. Oh, I need fractal relics so bad. But the thing is, the problem is, I need 400 fractal relics. But I also need pristine fractal relics. Because, let me see, I have 56 pristine fractal relics. I'm trying to get an ascended accessory or possibly ascended ring. I'm thinking maybe an, accent, uh, an ascended accessory, my second one, because that way I can always just uh, reset the other one that I have, and then I can have both of them be the stat set that I want. Um, and because I'm I'm working on, I, I still need two Harriers rings and two Harriers accessories. All I have is the back item and the amulet. And the ascended Harriers accessories and rings are super hard to get. But, uh, yeah. But if I can, I think, but the accessories are more expensive. So, you know, if I get a choice of which one I want to get. I think the rings are 2,000 trader contracts, and I think the accessories are 4,000. So, since they added an ability to reset missed talismans, and missed pendants, and missed bands, um, if I just get two accessories, I already have one uh, accessory. It's on my soldier's gear set. Are we going this way? Which way? Wait, hold on. Which way are we going? This guy's dead. Yeah, it's on my soldier's gear set. What was I saying? Am I going to leave combat? There we go. So, and I also have a missed pendant for the amulet. Although I already have a Harrier's amulet. So, we're all good there. Okay, apparently we are going this way. Evade. I'm not going to help that person up. Can't. Okay, here we go. We got it. We did it. We did it. We got this on lock. And now I can revive this person. Okay. Evade. And evade. And I'm not going to have a third evade. It even triggered the thing. I don't know how you're supposed to evade that crap. Also, are they, are they they're capturing the central altar? Why are they doing this? Why would you do this? I'm dead. Okay. I'm definitely dead. GG. I don't know why they're trying to do the central one. I, that's why. Why would they do that? Yeah, oof. Oof is right. Trying to do that central altar first.
people that have done this fractal a lot know that um, the central altar is very very difficult to capture if you try to do it first it's possible but super difficult so almost nobody actually does it um, whereas the eastern and western aren't too bad oh okay hold on oh how do we um, hang on a second there's a char corpse over here how can I get in there Perhaps I can't yet. Perhaps we need to capture the central altar first. But. Okay, here we go. Featherfoot Grace. Can we do this? Oh, no. We're not going to be able. I'm not going to be able to do this. Because, yep. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's the hamstrung thing. It's, it's the thing where uh, the less health you have, the slower you move. It's that. So because of that, I couldn't, like, look how slow I'm moving right now. 41, 42 percent because of the, the bleeding on me. So I'm, like, slowly moving slower and slower. That's horrible. That hamstrung thing is really bad. Okay, here we go. Let's try. Agony. Oh, dang it. I healed with agony. I really wish I could use my defensive, my Dolyak build on this. But I just don't have the agony resistance yet. Still need a couple of pieces of armor, I think. And also an ascended mace. An ascended mace would help. Oh, it's this thing. Oh, this one's really annoying. Unless they've already gotten there. Okay. <laughs> no skin off my nuts. Can't believe I just said that. Alright, so we got the singularity. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the potions now. I'm just going to go ahead and use potions. I think we're good now. Okay, here we go. CC. There we go. I've got plenty of CC. CC for days. Alright. Now I can do more DPS if I go like this. Nobody, uh, nobody outspikes me like the dragon hunters do. Dragon hunters outspike me every time. And I think it's the traps. I think it's because they can set so many traps in one area. And, and like it just does so much damage because of that. Okay, here we go. CC, more CC. We got this. Come on. There we go. Earthshaker helped. Uh oh. Crap. I don't wanna I don't wanna throw up on you guys. We need we also need some boom removal. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is intense. And I think we're kind of doing it wrong, but... Oh, crap. All right. Summon, summon the banner. Summon the banner. Get up. Do we not have enough CC? I'm trying. I'm trying. Yes. Yes, we did it. Oh, I have so much CC. It's tough, but I can do it. Um... What am I meant to do here? Am I just supposed to kill this guy? Because I can. Okay, we're not. 
I don't need to. Let's use my heal. Should I maybe use dual daggers for this? I don't know. Oh, crap. Because peak performance. Oh, no. I've got confusion, too. Oh, this is really bad. I'm out. I don't have the uh, I don't have the CC, and I don't think the rest of the team has the CC. Yep. Boom. Nuked. Party nuked. Should have GG. So I didn't damage my armor, but doesn't matter. Holy crap! This is probably not going to happen. Probably going to wipe. Yep, down to 24%, but, <laughs> well, shucks. Okay, we got this this time. We're going to do it. We've got it. Okay, I'm going to watch out for that CC. Aha, there, CC indicator. Um, switch weapons, please. Okay, we're good. I blocked that somehow. I did I was I given Aegis? able to full counter a hit there. Okay. Alright. Bulls charge. We got backbreaker. We got earth shaker. Alright. Cool. Okay. Looks like we have kind of averted most of the danger here. Slap on a Mage Bane Tether. I need to up my DPS right now. This Mirage. Mirage has got some pretty good damage. Now, we need CC. We got it. Now, Mirage can spike pretty well. It just, in my experience... The, the only class that can consistently, nearly every time, outspike me in damage is Dragon Hunter. I don't know. This boss has a lot of boons. Maybe I should slot for some boon removal. Oh, these guys have, like, no health. Hurry up and vomit already. I'm, I'm, I might die. Yeah, I died. But at least we got the CC. That was good. Somebody's dead already. I'm about to be... Yep, I'm defeated. Dang it, man. I need to kill the ads when they come up. Oh no, they don't have the CC for this. I don't know how much CC Dragon Hunter has access to, but I don't think Tempest has access to a lot, so. Yeah, goodbye. Alright. 
Avoid AoE to keep vets from spawning. Will make life easy. I agree. All right. Instantly, we got the CC going right now. No, no, come on, no! I wanted to switch to my hammer. Apparently, I didn't need to, but still. Is that what makes them spawn? Because I may have accidentally just made one spawn. Also, that hurt. I love how, as a spellbreaker, kick, the skill kick is so cool because it's kind of like you're just kicking a boon right off the foe, right off the enemy. Pretty cool. Did I trigger my sing- oh no, I did not trigger my singularity already, but I'm going to need to use a heal skill so I don't. Oh, and that was close too. Oh, and that hurt. <sighs> not very good at this. But the thing that I love about Guild Wars 2, like raids and fractals, is that really the most important thing is not your skills, it's not your gear. Well, I mean, okay, so gear is important, but man, stupid guy threw up on me. Look at this. Gear is important, but ascended gear is not like the, the hardest thing in the world to get. It's difficult, right? It's got some it's got some grind involved, but but you can get anybody can get ascended gear if they just work hard for it. And anybody can get exotic gear and <laughs> I mean, seriously, anybody can get exotic and that's the next best thing. So not always ideal. Gosh dang, man. I am not surviving. I just, ah, I just need my Dole EX Spellbreaker build. I have no survivability with this build. Well, I've got a lot of health. That's it. I don't even have as much as my Dole EX Spellbreaker build. But what I love so much about, um, about Guild Wars 2 Raids and Fractals is that it's more skill-based. People go down way too fast. <laughs> We're just dropping like flies. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah, Druid would probably help. Also, should have just used one of those. Oh, okay. So he's gonna switch. Cool. Druid would help. Druid would definitely help. Last try. Don't do last try. Try with us for hours. Might have to eat some more fruitcake soon. But definitely for the other for the other tier fours, I'm going to try my Doliac Spellbreaker because that is so much more fun to play right now. This build does a lot of damage, but the survivability is just, it leaves a lot to be desired. Because, yeah, power precision is great, and I've got 81 chance to crit, which means that Fury is actually kind of wasted a little bit on me. 
when I switch to my hammer, it's only 74%, but you don't, I mean, how many times are you really trying to crit with the hammer? I'm going to slot, I'm going to go loss aversion instead of slow counter, because I feel like loss aversion would probably help us a little more. Yeah, that's true. He said we're CCing too slow. That's absolutely right. I have a bunch of CC, but we need more. Party needs more. Alright, here goes my damage. I'm spiking. I'm spiking. And the person that changed was the Dragon Hunter, and the Dragon Hunter always outspikes me. Alright, cool. So. Now, when because of loss aversion, anytime I remove one of those boons that he always has, it's going to do an extra bit of unblockable damage. Pretty cool deal, if you ask me. Dang it, man. I'm, I am doing this. I am the cause of my party's suffering. No, we don't have enough. We don't have enough. Earthshaker, please. No! No! Dang it, man. Oh my gosh. That was really bad, and that was my fault. That was so my fault. Is anybody still alive here? Yes, that's what I want to ask. Why do they have so little CC? Oh, breathing GG. Hold on. <laughs> Good luck, people. He just leaves. Okay, here we go. We're going to have to find a whole new party. Alright, let's see. Tier 4. 99. Hopefully that'll give it, get us a person soon. Oh, there we go. <laughs> That's another one. Sometimes you just get a bad group. I mean, I've been in a lot of groups where like, um, we're like we just can't kill anything and then everybody leaves because they get tired or it starts a chain reaction like one person leaves and then that then another person and then pretty soon there's only two people or worse just me and then I have to completely build a new party from the ground up um, and I've done that before but then the next party ends up being super good and we just complete it no problem. We just need to find three more people. <laughs> we'll see. My Doliac build needs, I need to get more Agony Resistance for him, because, because right now, like, this build does a ton of damage, it just can't survive, it just doesn't have enough survivability, and the thing is, Spellbreaker, like, Spellbreaker helps, right, because, um, Spellbreaker has a lot of, oh, Spellbreaker has a lot of natural survivability, but, um, but, uh, even with the Spellbreaker's natural survivability, it's still not enough, like, because of the natural, basically the survivability comes down to natural healing, um, and then also the full counter. Full counter is, 
is really one of the things that allows Spellbreaker to really shine. But it's sacrificing the protection that you would get if you ran guard counter. And then it's also sacrificing the, the condition copying and the resistance that you would get if you ran revenge counter uh, in favor of traits that just make you do more damage. And I'm also not running defense. So if I was running defense, then it would have a lot more. But in order to have axe mastery, I gotta run discipline. So I could probably run defense. Actually, I might try that a little bit. I could probably run defense if I... Maybe cleansing iron? We'll try that. And then... If I did uh, dual daggers, and then I can run sun and moon style. I Usually I don't run dual daggers on... In PvE, Spellbreaker. Usually, dual daggers are for PvP. Oh, we got somebody. Hi. This will be easier once more people join. Any left. I hate that. I hate how, like, somebody will join the party and then. Somebody will join the party, and then, um, I'm leaving. <laughs> and then they'll leave, but when they leave, you're the only one left, so it will remove the party from LFG. It sucks. It's kind of a, kind of a dick move. Okay, 96, is that, what is that one? 96 is Etherblade? Alright, I'll do that one. Can I? Oh, apparently I cannot. What do we got here? Come on. Give me some real stuff. Why can I not join? I'm not sure why I can't join that party. It's a little weird. What's going on? We'll see. Perhaps I was in... I don't know. Perhaps it was my instance. <laughs> okay. Why can I not join this one? I really want to join it. We could do 90... 96. 96 is Etherblade, right? You know what? I'm just going to do Rex. Rex. We're going to do Rex because it takes less time. I actually don't have as much time today as I normally would because um, tomorrow I'm leaving for Florida. I got a little bit of packing left that I have to do. But I'm mostly done. All right, crap. What was the oh, day? Oh, 64. Oh my gosh, Gaumon over reactor. <laughs> Probably my least favorite one. That's all right. It's it's long, but tier three, I think it'd be all right. And we're getting people. So as long as we're getting people to do it then we're good hi well greetings we got a druid too look at that all right cool so i'm trying this out i i hope this will work i'm not sure if it will but we're gonna try we, i'm running uh, double daggers Right, I've even got Crest of the Assassin going right now. Um, and 
and I have not done dual daggers in PvE since Spellbreaker first came out, and I discovered that they didn't, or no, 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 since, since the balance patch that came after Path of Fire, and they buffed axes so much, I figured, okay, well, axe is definitely the primary damage weapon for warriors, so, you know, might as well use axes, make an axe build. So I usually run uh, Discipline, but we're good. As long as I have peak performance. The, like Seriously, most of the buff, I, I think most of the buff to Power Warrior came in the form of peak performance. They're really trying to work hard to make Strength a solid trait for Power Warrior. Eighteen thousand. Look at that huge spike there. Wow. The scourge spiked harder, I think. But scourges can spike quite hard. But but the thing is, scourges can spike hard with condi damage, which shouldn't be possible. Scourges still have a lot of work that needs to be done. I don't know if this is too loud, by the way. Oh, that's not good. I don't like that. What am I even doing here? I, I didn't even realize that that was happening. Oh, man. That's really cringy. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I was about to do that, but... That's fine. Somebody else get the cooling rod. Not about to get it. All right. Do not need the singularity there. What is this guy doing? Hi. I like this golden fractal dagger. It might be kind of cool to run... Uh, run dual golden fractal daggers, but... How could I give up my silence of a thousand years? That is my pride and joy. Look at that. Look at that spike. It's not as hard as I, I can with axes, but hopefully because I'm running defense. Hopefully that will uh, increase my survivability. And I just full countered against a door. Wonderful. Nice job. Okay, that skill's bugged. Daggers also have a bit of mobility. The axes only have a tiny bit of mobility. I mean, the daggers don't have a ton, but they do have some. They've got the uh, the leap skill on a six second cooldown, and your burst. The burst skill is also some mobility for you. I'm surprised I'm top DPS right now. I really did not expect to be top DPS with dual daggers, but we're fine. That's fine. Where are we going next? Oh, I already have a single little singularity. So where are we going next? Is it this room? Oh, it's this guy. Oh. Hi, Peter. Glad you could join us. Oh, I freaking hate this boss. Oh, 
Okay, this is this is one of the most annoying. Good news, you can interrupt champions now. Yes, that is true. Um, I could perhaps put like a superior sigil of severance here, which makes you gain more precision and ferocity when you um, when you interrupt an enemy. Um, I don't think this group has the DPS. So 75 vet, 50 vet, burn. Okay, on your hollow smith. Um, I've heard hollow smith is pretty fun to play. I do not have an engineer, but but they, but I hear like Power Hollow Smith is pretty good at the moment. Let's see if everybody's ready. Usually for this build, I use dual axes, but I switched to dual daggers just because I had no survivability at all. Okay, yeah, it's fine. I think a lot of classes work well with just Berserker's gear. I think there are there are many, many classes where you could just slot them for Berserker's gear, and they'll do well. Not OP, but fun. Okay. I've heard that in the very beginning it was OP. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that was a different class I'm thinking of. Firebrand, perhaps? But uh, in the very beginning when Hollow Smith first came out, I thought it... Or I, I heard that it was super OP, but that they nerfed it because of a bug. Or that it was super OP because of a bug, and they, that's that's the way they nerfed it. So. Okay, vet. Where's the vet? There he is. Okay, I'm quite happy with how this is going so far, except the fact. Except for the fact that there is a downed player there, and and I used my battle standard, it didn't even work. Oh, he's fully healed. I guess I'm not so happy with how this is going at the moment. Let's see, it's only in PvP, I guess. Oh yeah, okay. I wish I had an overlay that would show me the the chat. I don't know what app to use though. Okay, we're all good. Let's just try again. Let's kill this veteran. I do have a bit of the CC on my dagger, it kind of helps. I'm not really used to having any CC on my primary weapon set because I've been used to playing with Axis. Okay, is it gonna, oh, is it gonna spawn another vet when it gets down to 75? Please no. Oh, it is. Uh, this is bad. This is so bad. This is some good spike damage. Happy about that. Alright, there's, there's gonna be another vet. feeling and all those ads get to him but this group definitely does not have the DPS to uh, to just burn I've been with some groups that have a lot of DPS you just easily burn this guy but
All right, we're good. Just burn this guy now. Burn, 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 burn. Except, oh, except he's going to get another vet. Oh, my. It's bad if your team doesn't know what to do. Yes. I, I think this team knows what to do. We're just not doing it very well at the moment. I mean, this team doesn't really play like one that doesn't know what to do. Thing is, you need to kill. You not only need to kill the vet, but you also need to kill the vet as fast as possible. Because the more time that you give, the more time that you give this guy. Oh, he's got the shield. Oh, that's so bad. The more time that you give this guy, the more of those smaller ads that can get that can get to him. He's at forty percent now. Oh, come on, we could do this. Okay, I don't know if it's because we have a druid this time, or because I'm running defense, but I'm very happy with my survivability right now. Quite happy with my survivability. Okay, now where... So we're there. Okay, we'll see. Okay, let's see what we've got going right now. I can go first. I'm pretty good at this part, actually. Alright, go, go, go. I also have Featherfoot Grace, that helps. Get it? I think he, yeah, he got it. Anything else? Maybe I can take the other one in here. Okay, so my cooldowns are all good. Um, and I've got more endurance now. Okay, I'm going to go here. Oh, well, apparently we didn't even need that one, but... <laughs> um, there's people watching and you have the chat on the screen. Yes, yes, I, um, I found... Hi, Jua, by the way. Um, yeah, what I basically did is just had a pop-out chat. Um, I tried to get hex chat to work, but I don't really know how to set it up with YouTube, only Twitch. So, um, I decided to just do the pop-out chat, and then I just added an OBS. It works. Does the job. Is everybody up? No, not everybody's up here. Come on, get up here. Get your butt up here, come on. Nyurun Mist Rider. Probably butchered that like I do most pronunciations. Are we ready? Are we going? Let's go. Bulls charge, come on. And I don't exactly know what that AoE does. I don't even know what it does.
Oh, I switched to hammer so I could do CC on him, but no longer needed. The thing is, my Dolyak Spellbreaker also, let see, one should be easy unless someone falls. Yeah, the, this boss is actually not too bad. Um, and it's also tier 3. Tier 3 is not really too bad. It's tier 4, that's the issue. Um, oh crap. And, okay, not only is it tier 4 that's the issue, it's also that, um, uh, what's it called? The slime boss. Gosh, I hate that guy. Alright, there we go. Got tons of CC. And, uh, what was I saying? I think I was saying something about my Doliac Spellbreaker build. Because the thing about that build is that it's so fun to play and it's super defensive, but um, I don't currently have the agony resistance to to run it on all of the tier four fractals. Only the only like half of them, I think. But the thing is, I could run it on the tier three fractals, but. You don't need the survivability of that build on the tier 3 fractals. You could just run a DPS build. Working on making a blog for my channel, so I will just turn on, turn the stream on for at least one more person watching. Watching on other stuff. Okay. I mean, that's fine. That is absolutely fine. Alright, so let's, uh, first of all, let's get out of here. And I need my keys. There we go. My encryption keys. Wait, what? Wait, it says I was kicked. Who kicked me? What? I don't even... What? What was that? Spiritus Mage Hunter was kicked by Xena... Haganoshi. Or Roshi... Hold on, what is this? Roshio? No, that uh, that's that's no one that I know. And wow, I have no idea. I have no idea what that even was. Okay. No, re no, I got a reward. Uh, I got I got auto loot. So it um. So it automatically got it. The reward was the fractal encryptions. Um, and the... I believe it was also the plus one infusions. I got it. I can prove it as well. Advanced logistics. Currently 11.41 here in the great country of Korea. I'm about to uh, go to Florida soon though. The Warriors still stick with Berserker. I mean, Berserker is a good, is it's a good spec. Um, I like Berserker. It's a it's good for many things, but um, the problem is that I, I think people are so disrespectful toward warriors. It's like the like the name of the meta builds currently for raids is Banner Slave. Like, are you kidding me? Slave. We don't call druids heal slaves. Let me see, because my warriors using hybrid damage. Yeah. That's true. You want to use condition and power damage. Berserker is the way to go. Because Spellbreaker... Spellbreaker does not do good condition damage at all. It's a power spec. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I really feel like warriors get so much disrespect in, in raids and and even some fractals. I There was this one, um, there was a tier 4 Thalmanova reactor fractal yesterday, I believe. And, um, and the thing is, the team, the group... So you see, same problem with NG, yeah. Always the kit build, yep. Um, the thing is, the group um, did not know how to do that slime boss. Like they were not, they were not timing it out properly. They were just trying to DPS the entire thing to death. And I was trying to kill the vets, and they weren't doing it. And because I was the only one trying to kill the vets, I kept getting down. And and so some guy, and I'm just like, dang. Or like, I just typed LOL, like, we need to, we need to focus on the strategy, not just try and DPS this guy. And, and some guy was like, some guy was like, that's bound to happen on your build, no offense. I'm like, and how would you know anything about my build? It's, and he was like, that is freaking crap in PvE. What's not to know? I'm like, wow. And I was I was very upset about that, so I just left the group, and I found another another one, and the people were actually nice, and we completed it super easily and super fast because they actually knew what to do. The problem is, you have a lot of people. So sick, yeah. Um, you have a lot of people in in this game. It's, it's not at the lower levels, right? Because at the lower levels, the community is just the same friendly, amazing, like, ball of greatness that they've all, they always have been. That's why I don't do raids. Yeah, well, my guild has raids, but I don't require meta builds at all. So, um, it's like, it's a really inclusive group, and we just, like, we wipe a lot. We've never actually cleared one, but we have fun, so... And we talk and we have a good time. That's why I do that. But um, the thing is you have so many people um, that are elitist in this game. And, and they're elitist even though they shouldn't be because they're not even that good. Like you have a lot of people that will just go and look up a meta build and just try and do the rotation. And think that they're good just because they can do a rotation that somebody else figured out for them. Um, and they're not. They don't really know the class that well. They just want to play a certain role in the raid and blah, blah, blah. They don't really know even why the build is good or anything. They just remember the rotation. And, yeah. Whereas, I don't... I'm, I'm not a fan of the meta build for Berserker right now. Like, I get it that it's a good build. And I get why it's in the meta. But I don't like to play it. It's not fun for me. They're not good, so they need the meta. Yes, that's true. Um, and um, so it's like, it, it's just not a fun build for me to play currently. The Condi DPS, or the as they call the Banner Slave. Um, so, like, I, I don't generally enjoy playing Berserker. I know it's a good spec, but it's not usually for me. I love playing Spellbreaker, and so I've got a lot of Spellbreaker builds. Um, builds that actually do more damage than than my Berserker builds. And the reason for that is I like going power. And um, Berserker has some stuff for power, but Spellbreaker ends up actually excelling a lot with the Attacker's Insight. If you're good at what you do, you should be able to use your own build to work through. That's that's absolutely true. Um, thing is, I've been playing almost exclusively Warrior for my entire time in Guild Wars 2. And I know basically all that the class has to offer. I know less about Berserker in particular, because I almost never play it. But, um, but I do know certain key traits like uh, like bloody roar like um, like smash brawler smash brawler is a good trait um, dead or alive you know I know some key traits 
and because I know my way around the class, I'm able to actually make some pretty interesting builds that work really well just because I just know how to play warrior. And they might not necessarily work uh, if you don't know how to play warrior. But, but the trade-off with that is that I basically don't know how to play any other class. I'm horrible at, at every class except for warrior. Thing is, meta build for raid is only limited for... Yes, that's true. It's only for raids. It's only in situations where you're going to... Where you're going to have all those extra things. And that's another thing. The golem... There you go. There, there go my rewards. The golem that people use to test DPS... The thing about that is that people test it under absolutely ideal... Yeah, yeah, raids are usually not fun if you go with, like, pug groups or something like that. Um, usually, the, the conditions that they test for the golem are absolutely ideal, and there's, like, like they'll even go with all the banners and Assassin's Presence from a Revenant, even though you may not even have a Revenant in your party. Like, just all these absolutely ideal buffs. And, um, that doesn't always happen, right? You don't always have access to those unique buffs and, like, always constantly 25 stacks of might and fury and everything like that. I love, let me see. Fractals of Mist is more fun because there could be, yeah, there's a lot more viable build. I think also, I think a lot of builds are viable in, um, in raids, but people act like the meta is the only possible thing. The cool thing about, uh, the thing I like about my build, my warrior build, uh, currently, the one that I'm using right now, is that it only depends on stuff that you can put out by yourself so like it doesn't constantly rely on somebody else giving you might or fury or whatever because the main benefit the thing that makes you do the most damage is well first of all berserkers power but then also peak performance which increases it by 33 percent so because you're able to constantly put out that peak performance, you're constantly able to increase your own damage. Nobody else is doing that for you, right? So, because of that, you don't have to, like, be dependent on things that may not be available in the raid or fractal. And uh, my other build, my other, like, one of my favorite builds by far is... Uh, my Doliac Spellbreaker build. You see? At least Anet's trying to change something. Yes. Definitely ArenaNet is trying to um, kind of shatter the current meta. I really like what they're doing so far. I really... They, they've really buffed Warrior, like Power Warrior, a lot. Recently. Because... Like, one of the things that they made is they, they changed Stick and Move. Stick and Move used to do extra damage for when your Endurance was not full. Um, they changed it to where now instead, each stack of might gives you 10 extra power, right? And that's amazing. Um, let me see, it's clear the power builds will become more easy to gain might for themselves. Yeah, that's true. Um, and also, like I said, Power Warrior. The thing is, the meta build for Berserker does not run strength. So it's it's not in any way a buff to that meta build. But instead, if you're using... Uh, what is it? If you're using a Power build for Warrior, then you're going to be gaining more health. So it's an extra 250 power when you have 25 stacks of Might. For a total of a thousand instead of seven hundred, which is a huge difference.
and they nerf Mike's uh, might makes right, but that's also because it's so much easier to apply might to yourself with Spellbreaker. Especially like my Doliac build. My Doliac build gets might so easily. Probably gonna switch to that build for a while after this. is so easy on tier one. Captain. <coughs> I kind of appreciate that even though um, even though the Living World Season 1 stuff is not playable anymore, you can still at least um, play a lot of the stuff that was available at that time through Fractals. Physical line for Warrior got some good changes. Yes, I completely agree. The strength line, um, just as soon as they made that change to peak performance, Power Warrior got a lot of love, cause, cause that just that's such a huge increase in damage. It's hard to rival. Okay. <laughs> Before I got into tier 4 fractals, I, I used to think that it was like pretty much just as elitist as raids, pug raids, but um, usually it's not. Usually it's not too bad. Physical change really made me want to try berserker build. Yeah, that it could be really fun. A, a physical berserker power build. That could be really fun. Like, I don't know what weapon you would use. If you're just going pure power, like, you'd probably want to use, like, maybe... You you might want to use greatsword. Greatsword, hammer, mace, maybe? Definitely axes would be a good choice. I've tried a berserker axe build, though, and it just doesn't do as much damage as my axe spellbreaker. But I'm thinking that the survivability that the survivor that the uh, spellbreaker sacrifices in order to get more damage, I feel like maybe that's that's the reason why it can do more damage. Whereas the berserker has the thing where he can like break stuns on berserk mode, and he's also got like of course headbutt, so you got extra CC and everything. And um, like the spellbreaker elite skill is not at all useful in PVE. But, you know, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Alright, so let's see what we got here. Um, that's some extra karma. Drip. How much is that? 150. Okay. So I got some karma. Um... See, just some gear bags here. Gonna salvage. Oh, we got a few rares as well that we can uh, get some ectos out of. All right, so let's see now. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. I've been getting uh, the obsidian shard, so I actually could deposit the bloodstone dust. Cool. All right, let's see what we can buy this time. Uh, probably just going to buy the bag of airship parts again. And, of course, the bag of obsidian. Your time said Thief Deadeye still poorly on many aspects. Um, yeah, I've heard it's not really that good in PV... PV what? Anything? I... <laughs> I've heard it's not that great because I feel like... Or I mean, I've heard that the rifle is really slow. A long time ago, I had a thief. 
Um, but I basically just got a thief so I could run dual daggers and that's it. And uh, eventually I deleted him because it wasn't that fun for me. Yeah, but uh, appar apparently Deadeye kind of got screwed. That's a shame. A lot of people say Spellbreaker is completely worthless in, uh, in PvE, but I beg to differ. I'm, I've done Tier 4 Fractals in PvE and with the Spellbreaker, so I'm good. Alright, 14. I'm going to open these in encryptions. I'm not going to do the daily Tier 4s today because... I just kind of want to mess around doing other stuff because I, ha I have to leave to go to Florida tomorrow. So. Let's see what we got. We have four more keys as well. Let me sort this. I'm excited. Looks like it's a good haul, actually. Can I deposit? I can deposit. Sweet. Okay, that's where I have a full stack now, so I'm actually going to keep some. I'm going to put some in my bank. Some bloodstone dust. I've tried also Firebrand. I like the idea of like using the tomes and the mantras and everything. It, it's really fun, but the problem is I'm just not good at playing it. Because I always forget, like you have, you basically have four weapon skill bars, and it's it's tough to keep up with all of that. Like for warrior, I know what all my weapon skills are, I know what all my utilities are, and then I know like my secondary weapon if I need to switch to it. But I usually don't need to switch to it. With firebrand, I've got to memorize. My axe and torch, which is a pretty good combination. Um, and then also another weapon set, so it's actually five. Another weapon set, and then the three tomes. It's really difficult to, uh, to actually memorize all those skills. Okay, so 75 uh, plus one infusions, not bad. And we made about eight gold from that. Pretty good. All right, so I'm actually going to do the jumping puzzle. I want to I want to farm some of the jumping puzzle. I want to make a little bit of karma, a little bit of money, right? I'm going to do that uh, cuz it's the winter's day jumping puzzle. And you got to have some winter's day cheer, right? Let's see. Do my tequado first. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go to Divinity's Reach. Divinity's Reach. Here we go. And I also um, need to use the bathroom, so I will be right back and uh, enjoy this advertisement while you wait. I, I don't know if this will work, but I'm going to try. We'll see.
Okay, I'm back. Um, I'm going to turn on my video in a second. But, uh, yeah, I love doing this jumping puzzle. It's a huge, like, it's a really good karma farm. It's a really good money farm. I did it a lot yesterday. And I had actually, like, I think I had, like, over 130 gold at that point. But I spent a ton of money because I was trying to make another piece of ascended armor. So, you know, that happens. Okay, I have to change out of my jammies. see what the temperature is currently 30 or sorry 40 degrees outside not bad not that cold actually could be much colder all right now I want to get the extra karma so I'm gonna go ahead and eat some consumables here Oh, and is there a guild karma banner? There usually is. There usually is, I said. There, is there seriously no guild karma banner? Wow. Surprising. Alright, well. Let's go into Winter Wonderland. This jumping puzzle is so fun. I really enjoy it. And of course we're doing the gingerbread path. Two, three, four. Alright, let's just do this. Oh, it's also the first time we've done it for the day, so, um, I'm going to do all three paths, actually. Also, there is a char blocking my view. Oh, he died. Thank you for dying. going to make that. I have to wait until the next one. Okay, so if we if we started out with about 20 minutes, I would want to get about 10 completions in, which would be 150 Winter's Day gifts. Hopefully I don't lag out like I have before. Okay, and then jump right past this one. Dodge once, dodge twice, and jump. Okay. That was close. It felt close. The, oh, no, 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 I was going to do the gingerbread path again. I think I'm going to do the snowman path now. It's just such a good karma farm. You farm so much karma. I mean, not, I mean, not only from this, but also with the orphans and divinity's reach, giving them presents. Okay. Okay, I don't know if that peppermint disappears. 
It does on the gingerbread path. We're good. Don't even front. We got this. I actually, I started out this winter's day with like a little bit less than like 300,000 karma and then, and then once I had enough I actually spent all of it on the Relic of Melandru for my soldier's gear set. Um, and then I just started making it back. I made back like 20,000 or so and then I bought I wanted to buy an inscription recipe I accidentally bought an insignia recipe or something like could be the other way around and uh, so I like wasted that 21,000 karma but now I'm up to like 720,000 or something I can't remember I'm 700 and something thousand I have so much karma because of this Okay, come on. Yeah, Winter's Day is definitely all about karma. Halloween is definitely all about money. Because of the labyrinth farm. You go to the Mad King's Labyrinth and you just get tons of trick-or-treat bags and sell those. I suppose you can sell the, the Winter's Day gifts from this, but I'm... I feel like maybe you get more from the labyrinth farm. Maybe it's easier or something. I don't know. But, you know. I keep wanting to dodge at this part. I don't know why. Like, every single time my finger goes on the dodge key, I'm just like, alright, get ready to dodge. But... I don't need to. For this part, I need both dodges, though, so... You gotta be careful. It'd be really cool to be a daredevil. Here, where you get three dodges. That would be nice. Alright, so I've done all three paths for the day. Now we could just do the gingerbread path for the rest of the time. We can get tons and tons of gifts. This is seriously, I mean, I actually did not do the labyrinth farm back at Halloween. I don't know. I was a Halloween noob. I was here for the first Halloween, and then I wasn't here for the second Halloween. So, I, um... I was there back when Halloween was still very new. I th I may have been here. I may have been here for like the third Halloween. I can't remember exactly, but I don't I don't really remember ever doing the labyrinth farm. I guess I didn't really understand it. I didn't really know if you were supposed to open the trick or treat bags and sell what was inside, or just to sell the trick or treat bags themselves. But now I know you're supposed to sell the bags themselves. Just like the Winter's Day presents. If you open the Winter's Day presents, you're not going to make very much money from it. But if you open, or if you just sell the Winter's Day gifts, then you're going to make a lot more money from it. And the reason, like, the price is brought up by the the ever-so-slight chance of getting that snow diamond infusion. Everyone wants that one. So, but I don't, I don't do it on regular gifts, though. I just open my personalized gifts, because you can't sell those anyway. So, I open those, and I figured that's my little entry into the snow diamond lottery. But 
that's just how I do it. Oh, I just missed a jump. It's more about the luck. If you get the diamond infusion, yeah. Yeah, you need a, you need a lot of luck. I once saw somebody open like 10,000 Winter's Day gifts and he didn't even get one. It's insane. So I'm not really actively trying to get that thing. I just figure I figure if if I get it from my personalized gifts, then that's great. If I don't get it, then at least I still made some money from selling the regular gifts. And probably none of those gifts will ever be used to open a snow diamond infusion. Like probably right there there it's so rare that none of the gifts I sell will probably ever contain one. Yeah, one time I saw this guy in uh, Divinity's Reach, he just pinged it and he said just like, he just opened a couple of personalized gifts and he just got it. And everybody's like, congrats, you're rich now. <laughs> Seriously, who would actually use that infusion? I would never use an infusion like that because it's just 9 agony resistance. Like there's, it's just, it is literally, it is just cosmetic. I mean, now it gives you like a plus five stat bonus or whatever, but you can much for a much cheaper price. You can easily get um, a regular like mighty plus nine infusion that will give you the same stats. I mean, except it's it's going to give you power instead of healing power. But then you could just get a healing uh, a healing uh, plus nine infusion and. Like, it's, it's that simple. It's really not that bad. But but for one of those cosmetic infusions, like, I believe there's like a Choya infusion. And that you get that from the Choya Pinata. And I would never use it. As soon as I would get it, I would just sell it. Yes, it's it's definitely about fashion wars. But uh, I'm not really interested in fashion wars. I have some cool skins that I like, but I'm not going to spend crap tons of money. Except, there is one exception. And that is for my favorite axe skin in the entire game that is no longer on sale. And that is the Chaos Axe. And it's like over 600 gold on the trading post. And, oh, I would love to buy that axe. It's definitely my favorite axe skin in the entire game. And I got the Frostforged axe. Because before, before the Frostforge, I was using the Terracotta antique reaver skin and I wasn't a huge fan of it I mean it was cool I liked the fact that it was actually a blade like there was an actual blades edge on it because um, some axes some of the blades in this game do not look like blades they look like clubs so, especially some of the greatsword skins let me see 550G, go buy it. I wish I could. I don't have 550G on me. But definitely, that is that is probably the one thing in the game that is like super expensive. That like if I had enough money, I would just buy it in a heartbeat. Just no questions asked, give me the Chaos Axe. 
and I would dual wield it as well. Last time I checked it was like 600 something, but I guess it's gone down. I don't know. I don't know why. Maybe somebody had been holding on to it and they came back to the game and they had it and they just lowered the price. Could be. <clears throat> and then there's also the issue of greatsword skins. I love a lot of greatsword skins in this game and and I really like I wish Greatsword Warrior was more powerful <laughs> because I love using Greatsword, but um thing is it's not that powerful, it's just mainly just for nobility for mobility. And also let me see it's only available trading post or guaranteed wardrobe unlock. I know. It used to be available in some black line chests, I believe, but a long time ago. I almost fell. But yeah, I would I would love to do a wheel and th and then I don't really need any more great sword skins because I have sunrise and I tried for 5 years to get sunrise and I finally got it this year actually like a month or two ago can't remember but finally I got it and I was so happy and now I will never need another greatsword skin unless I decide to go for Twilight so that I can make eternity but other than that I'm not too interested in it so anytime it's kind of nice because because Sunrise is like my pride and joy and I just that is my favorite greatsword skin so when a new set of skins comes out I, I look at them and I look at the greatsword skin and I'm just like I don't need that I've got Sunrise Sunrise is like my baby They might add, and the, the thing is, let's see, never say never, still G2 Greatsword, yes, that's true, Generation 2 Greatsword, um, we'll see what that is going to be about. If it's a joke weapon, not a chance, I'm not a fan of the joke weapons, I like the serious weapons. Um, but honestly, I'm also not even sure if I would go for a, for a Generation 2 Greatsword, because... Like I said, I don't really use Great Sword on my Warrior very much anymore. When when Guild Wars 2 first came out, Great Sword Longbow Warrior was kind of all the rage. Like everybody like everybody that played Warrior loved to play Great Sword and Longbow. And it's just not that great anymore. Um But you know, I want a weapon that I'm, that I'm actually gonna use. If they do a dagger, I would love to do a dagger. I'm already trying to go for Astralaria, so that's the axe. That's the Gen 2 axe. Astralaria, I think, is an awesome skin. But the Gen 2 dagger, I would love. Hopefully, it is not a joke weapon, because the incinerator is not a joke weapon. Uh, but I'm not a huge fan of the incinerator. I feel like it would work if like if like an engineer could wield a dagger or something like that. Like I feel like the incinerator would be good. Or I don't know, perhaps elementalist or something like that. But for a warrior? Not really sure. Or like a thief. I I just feel it doesn't really fit the theme. Like I would love to have some kind of like Similar to like the Merciless weapon set, because the Merciless weapons are pretty good. Crap. Yeah, I got... It got a do dozen nerfs.
yeah, I got it. It was it was really good in the beginning. I think probably hundred blades. I I think I remember it being faster than it is today. I'm gonna look that up after this run. At, this will be my tenth completion, and I expected to get ten completions here, so I'll be good with ten. Although, should I go for another one? Maybe I should go for one more. But yeah, the greatsword, I just, I remember it being very powerful. I remember it being just so, so fun. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and try again. I might not make it. If I don't make it, I'll be fine. One, two, three, four. If they, in my opinion, if they could just kind of like buff 100 blades, and I don't mean buff the damage, I mean if they could just somehow buff the speed of it, just reduce the casting time of 100 blades, and then make, make that uh, whirling attack, the uh, Greatsword 3, if they could make that um, go a little bit farther maybe or perhaps do more with the greatsword burst skill I don't know but definitely the main thing is hundred blades if they could or another thing that they could do is if they made it so that you can use hundred blades while moving that would be a good buff Am I going to make this, please? I think I can make it. Good. I made it. If you could use 100 blades while moving, that would be perfect. One, two, and jump. Okay, I made it. 30 seconds. We made it. We got 11 completions. Don't even front. All right, leaving the instance. Yeah, yeah, 100 blades has not been touched for a long time. Let me see. I, I'm actually curious about this. When was the last change to 100 blades, and what did it do? very curious let's see um, okay so in 2014 September lowered the damage of the initial strikes by 5% each that's it that's the only nerf it's ever received so it has always been this slow also, apparently, it does have a, a lot of skill or a lot of strength. It's got 4.2 weapon strength, which is quite high, actually. I don't know, though. It doesn't. It feels like it's too weak still. Feels like it's a little bit weak, sauce. All right, so let's uh, let's sell some of these. They're so four point eight silver a piece. We got something going on with the trading post right now. Yeah, lowered the damage of initial strikes by five percent each. The final strike remained unchanged. So it's basically just encouraging you to do the entire thing. That's basically that's basically what they're doing. Okay, so we got vials of linseed oil, we got uh, some miscellaneous things. Uh, let's see, about 20 silver or so. Slowly I'm making my way back up to 100 gold. The journey to 100 gold. I had to pay so much. 
Now, let me see. In fact, it's a buff since 2013. Why is it a buff since 2013? Why is it? Let me see detailed history. I don't understand. Why is it a buff? When I look at the detailed history... Hang on, the, def the detailed history doesn't say that it targets three targets. But it needs the final... Oh, the overall damage is higher, but it needs the final strike. Yeah. If it's true, if that's true, where it actually didn't target three targets until it was changed in 2014, then that's a significant buff. My guy just goes, where am I? But yeah, I got that. Um, okay, so... I'm gonna do some various little things, but I do... I, I got a phone call, I actually have to call the person back, so... So, I am going to mute my microphone, but... Uh, I will be right back. Uh, I'm still gonna be playing, but I just need to mute my microphone. So, hold on a second.
Okay. I'm back. We're good. Somebody mentioned that overall the damage was buffed. And that is true. Uh, I'm actually going to launch Guild Wars 2 Taco just so I can do this orphan run. I don't know why. If I launch it from the search thing, then it doesn't work. Um, okay. Documents, Guild Wars 2 Taco. This orphan run, I was trying to do a few of the orphans while I was on the phone, but I don't have enough of them memorized. So. Okay. Alright, we should be good. I just need to uh, do this orphan run. I really want to do this orphan run while I still have the 50% karma, bo karma boost. Very few of these things, very few of those bonfires actually still exist in the world because it's impossible to get them anymore. So, when you get one, you really want to use I believe I've already done this one. Yes, I've already done that. And I've also done this one. So I memorized the first two, but I forgot all the ones after that. Let's see what we got. You get so much karma from this. Currently I'm at almost 800,000 karma. So I've already done that one apparently. I'm at almost 800,000 karma. Now I'm above 800,000 karma. And I started this thing, like, okay, so basically over the course of this winter's day, I have made um, almost a million karma. Which is pretty crazy. Which is really going to help if I ever decide to finish off those relics of the gods. Because I can't see. Apparently I've already done it. Um, because each one costs 315,000 karma. I already have Balthazar and Melandru. For my healing build, I would love to have the relic of Duena. That would be fun. And then I also need Grenth and Lissa. And then I would unlock the one for Abaddon if I got all those. And the one for Abaddon, I have no idea what I would even use that for. I mean, it would just be a theme, but... Melandru fits for Soldier's Gear. Duanus fits for a healing build. Lissa, I don't know what that would fit for. Grenth maybe some kind of lifesteal build, but it really would fit more on a necromancer. The thing is, I might not be able to use all of them thematically on my warrior. Melandru, Duena, and Balthazar makes sense. I mean, Duena, you can at least make the case that you're a whammo, so... As if whammos still existed. Rip. Rip in peace. Wait, a season of merriment. What is this? What is this? Complete the Winter's Day Church. Oh, what? I didn't even know I was on track to get this thing. And you get to get a wrapped weapon, weapon skin. That's, I mean, well, it's got that bow on it, but that's not that bad. Kind of stuff, but look at that. Freaking. <laughs> The long bow. That's the short bow. The dagger. Oh my gosh. <laughs> These are 
just Christmas weapons. <laughs> the great sword. Look at that freaking thing. The hammer. It's not that bad, actually. <laughs> you can kind of see how it's like it's got the wrapping paper over it. The mace. Oh my goodness. The pistol. Of course, we can't use pistols. The rifle. The scepter. The shield. And these things are a count bound on acquire. So, let me see other stuff that I can use. The sword. Not bad. The torch. What? That's Rodgort. That is Rodgort. But it's just wrapped. That is insane. I can't even believe that. It's freaking going to give you Rodgort. Oh, a toy golem. What? Princess doll. Toy soldier. Toy Ventari. Oh, I had I had a toy ben Ventari thing. Hold on. A bag of personalized Winter's Day gifts. Oh, but... But no. <laughs> no. It's only it's only a rare from this thing. It's not a super rare, but but no. You gotta get a wrapped weapon skin. I might want to get the wrapped axe. It's either gonna be the wrapped axe or per and you know what? This is the this is the device or this is Astralaria. That's hilarious. Now this is not sunrise or anything. And that that could be Sharur actually. This could be Eureka. That could be the HMS Divinity or something like that. This is They're freaking these are all like legendary skins. That's Rodgort. The legendary Warhorn is Howler. I don't know if that actually fits it, but that's insane. Anyway, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait on it. I'm not gonna choose for now. Um, I got some more orphans to give gifts to. And I'm at 815,000 karma. And let me just go ahead and eat, uh, not the Winter's Blessing, I'll do that one next time. So I'll get a full benefit out of it next time. Winter's Blessing is not something you could just pop normally so oh I also do I have any candy canes I could use did I get any I got one dang it man all right I'll use it and I'll see if I can get like one or two orphans in that minute hopefully I can we'll see here we go 2700 karma not bad not bad at all and I've already done this one I know I've already done that one so okay that one as well I'm about to run out of this peppermint thing this peppermint breath One more? Cool. We actually got one more before it ran out. Okay. Now we're getting... We're getting a little bit less karma here. We're getting like 150 less karma per orphan, but that's fine. The main thing is the plus 50% bonus from the bonfire. Because those bonfires cannot be had anymore. They're completely impossible to get anymore. Already done that one apparently. Let me 
see, I'm checking on my stream health. It looks as though my stream health is okay. Just gotta make sure. On my phone, it doesn't even look like it's live. Oh, yeah. There you go. We're good. Okay, then we want to go down here. And jump here. Anything? Sweet. 2,600 more karma. Look at this. We're already up to 842,000 karma. I'm easily, easily going to have over a million karma by the end of this thing. Do him yet? Yes, I know I didn't. In order to get three more um, relics of the gods. I would have to get, because I need three to unlock still, I would need to have 945,000 karma, I've already done that one, and I believe this is the end here, yeah, that's the end, so I'm pretty sure I did this last one, yeah, I did, okay, so yeah, in order to get the last three relics of the gods you would need to do you'd need to have 945,000 karma I'm not that far away considering how much we can get from these things all right so let's now go to uh, what was I going to do, actually? Oh, I was going to see if I could send my uh, obsidian shards. Let's go to obsidian shards. That's from the game, or from the guild design. A few people. Alright, um, let's see. Obsidian refinement. Let's just go down. City and refinement. All right, so I need thermocatalytic reagents. Um, I also need enough materials. Now, probably I'm just going to make two more imperial stars. That makes the most sense to me. So I will do that. Boom. Just have so many of these freaking things. Okay. I wonder, I'm wondering about the parables of the gods. Parables of gods. I'm going to see if I can get those on stream. That would be cool. That would be really cool if I could get the, the parables. I'm not created from the incomplete version by completing all six storyteller achievements in Siren's Landing. So, that's what we're going to do. We're going to see if we can get a mastery point from that. I still need... 12 mastery points. Okay. Complete all the parables of the guard of the gods. Storyteller. There we go. Balthazar. Oh, hold on. I'm getting, getting a message.
correct. So what? Okay, seek those who bring life near Baltazar. All right. Seek those who bring life near Balthazar. Okay. Um, how would we do this? Oh, my congestion's back. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Storyteller. Storyteller Abaddon? What? That's cool. There is a... Apparently there is a... The, if you complete the parable of Abaddon, you get a title. Storyteller Balthazar. Let's do the parable of Balthazar. All right, so let's head west into the corner and jump on jump up onto the curving stonework from the top of the arch glided across the ledge to a pair of silver and an oak art parable entries propped up against the wall oh I've actually been there before yeah it's up here you can use a mount to get up there but first you need to kill these guys I also forgot I was using dual daggers And since we're already here, might as well get this Orion Oyster. Wow, that was a huge leap. What? I did not expect the leap to go that, that far. Okay. Oh, yeah, here it is. Look at that. I did not see that before. First time I came here. All right. Yes, I've already read these parables, by the way. Okay. Uh, second parable. Using the updraft at the pool of lava just south of the heart marker, glide north into the circular alcove above the heart NPC. Uh, probably once again do that with a mount. Okay, where would it be? There's, uh, there's the updraft there. Is it here, maybe? Let's see. Yep, it's right here. Oh my gosh. Alright. Much easier than I expected. Again, use the updraft from the lava pool to reach Circular Cove, a bit west of the previous alcove. Uh, is it up here, maybe? I feel like I'm not supposed to be here, but... Nope, I see it. Down here. It's part three. Also, apparently I completed an event, but I don't feel like it. Okay, part four is in Lissa's reliquary. No, it's not. Alright, leaning against the northern wall between two large boulders. There's balls on. That's cool. Man, I wish Balthazar was still cool. He used to be so cool. 
Now, is this the right way? I believe it is. Between two large boulders? There it is. All right, um, from the fourth page, turn around and walk to the southern edge of the plateau. The fifth page, fifth page is about two ledges down and once again nestled against the north wall. If you miss it and drop too far, you can use the updraft to try again. Or you can use your griffin or springer. Two ledges down, the north wall. Uh, perhaps it's here. Here it is. Alright, so there's that. And the last one. What? Southern side of Pilaster Rock? Tucked away in a small alcove beneath the large shipwreck on the, on the world map. Holy crap. So something like, something like right there. Spark of Sentience. Part 2, Aurora Done. Cool. Well done. I have not gotten Aurora. I want Aurora. I'm going to have to set aside some time one day and just pump them out if I can. Okay, said something about it being near the shipwreck. There it is. Got it. So I completed the relic or the storyteller of Balthazar. Um. Then I don't know. That's probably all I'm gonna do for today. I want to do. I want to do the other ones. But I've got to eat, and I've got to finish packing and all that. So I think it's probably going to be the end of the stream. I will try to stream some more um, when I get back from Florida, um, which I'll be back on. I will be back on January. Crap. 7th, I think? Is it the 7th? Yeah, I think I'm gonna... Uh, yeah, I think I'm leaving on the 5th. I'm leaving Florida on the 5th. I'm gonna be back on the 7th. So, um, that is when I will be back. Um, I'll see if I can maybe make some videos while I'm in Florida, but I don't know. I, they may just be like, like actual videos, not just gaming videos. So, um, I am going to stop it right here, but I want to thank everybody so much for watching. Uh, we did have a, a couple of people that joined us in there, uh, actually had a maximum of eight viewers, which was pretty cool. So, um, that was pretty fun. And, um, but I'm going to, I'm going to let you guys go here, so. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you next year.